pajamas hey have you noticed something different yes they're different pajamas this time it's my magic and me t-shirt cool design eh they were designed by Wyatt Black who is on Instagram as at bubble zero very clever artist anyway I'm gonna sing you this song afterwards so are you snuggled down in your pajamas? I hope you are. If you're not, just pause the video and uh, and you can get into them. Now, these are my other pajamas. They're a bit like harem pants. In fact, they actually are harem pants, but they look like pajamas and always feel funny out in them during the day. So now I'm going to use them as pajamas. <laughs> the story today is a very funny story. It's called Rough Weather Ahead for Walter the Farting Dog. <laughs> Check out Walter. <laughs> Sees the farting. What does that say? Oh, surprise. But <laughs> surprise for the writer. There he is, farting away. Okay. Be cozy. Now, before we start, I've got some shout-outs to do. Um, I'm going to be doing shout-outs every day from now on. So, I'll do a few a day, and so you'll have to listen to make sure that you don't miss yours. This special one is for Caitlin. Hey, Caitlin, it is your fifth birthday today. I hope that you've had a lovely day and that this farting story <laughs> tops your day off for you. So happy birthday, Caitlin. Hope you had a lovely day having um, homemade McDonald's and a cake that Johnny and Lydia, that's right, were going to um, bake for you today. So I hope you've had a lovely day. I'm also shouting out to Asha, and that's Nigel's daughter, I think. So hey, Asha, thanks for listening. To Jesse and Cody, my longtime fans. Mum sent me a picture of you sleeping after one of my stories. So sleep tight tonight, guys. And to my very special friend, Huelo, and his mum, Roz. I hope you enjoy the story about the farting dog. Okay, now this is written by William Cotswinkle, Glenn Murray, and Elizabeth Gundy. And it's illustrated by Audrey Coleman. Cool illustrations just on the front bit here. And there. Right, let's get into it. Professor Compressor knocked on the door. I understand your dog has a farting disorder. It's not a disorder, said Betty and Billy. Yes, it is, shouted Father. Come on in. Professor Compressor looks a bit like a mad professor with his hair like that, doesn't he? Professor Compressor said, I have made a lifelong study of animal gas. He examined Walter, gently poking around his stomach. You'd better be careful, said Father. He farts when you do that. He won't fart at me, will you, Walter? There he is, pressing Walter's tummy. Oh my goodness, what's going to happen? Walter farted. Professor Compressor staggered backward, waving his gas meter. 10.7, the highest I've ever recorded. 
What a remarkable animal. Walter was pleased to be called remarkable. He liked Professor Compressor and licked his hand. Whoa, look at him being knocked over by the fart. <laughs> and here is Walter. Dad's got his hands on his hips saying, I told you so. <laughs> You're a good dog, Walter, said Professor Compressor, and I'm going to help you. He poked around some more. It's his digestion that causes such powerful farts. We don't mind, said Betty and Billy. Yes, we do, said Mother. Years of research have led me to this special formula, said Professor Compressor. Powders and potions appeared from his pockets. He plugged in a gleaming machine. Mix it in my Compressatron and serve it fresh three times a day. We're so grateful, said Mother. Hmm. Here's the Compressatron. Look at all the things going into it. I Actually, I can't see any things going <laughs> into it. <laughs> but anyway, let's see what happens next. So, three times a day, Mother mixed the special formula in the Compressatron. His farts aren't as bad, said Billy, hopefully. They're worse than ever, said Father. Your father is right, said Mother. That night, Father decided to mix the formula himself. He examined the powder carefully. More of this, he decided. Less of this and lots more of that. Father sniffed the new mixture and went, he smiled. That's better. Tastes pretty good, said Walter to himself, and ate it faithfully every day. It's working, cried Mother. The air smells so fresh. Hooray, said Betty. Walter was pleased too. Everyone was smiling. No one ran away when he came into the room, and Father even hugged him. However, inside, Walter, gas was building up slowly. Here's Father mixing up the new brew. Walter happily jumping up on him. That dog's getting fat, said Father. But it wasn't fat. It was farts, waiting to be set free. Professor Compressor's mixture and Father's expert touch were turning Walter into a blimp. Do you know what a blimp is? It's like one of those great big, Ear balloon kind of things, which advertises something usually. Walter began taking strange little bounces when he walked across the room. One evening, he floated over Father's chair. Great jump, Walter, said Billy. But it wasn't a jump. It was gas. Look at him flying around the room. <laughs> ah, I love it. The following evening, Billy and Betty were in their room doing homework. Billy, said Betty, look outside. Betty raced Billy out of the house. Walter was floating over the trees. Walter, come down, cried Betty. But Walter couldn't come down. Uh-oh. It's like the cow who flew over the moon. It's a dog instead. He floated on into town. Quite a view, he said to himself. A breeze came up and blew him over to the other end of town. This is getting serious, said Walter. You see the full picture there? Walter's floating over town. Crikey. Where's he going to end up? He knew the problem was gas. He knew the solution was, that's right, farting. He squeezed. He pressed his belly with his paws. He twisted into a knot. Nothing. He floated all night long. When morning came, he was high above the world. Mummy, said the little girl, look at that balloon. It's lost, said the little girl's mother. It will never come back. They thought Walter was a balloon. Here he is. Floating over the town, somebody else's town. Walter 
Walter floated for days. He floated over green hills and blue rivers. He floated over skyscrapers and farms. He floated in the dark and in the rain. He felt lonely and cold. He went whichever way the wind carried him. Suddenly, the wind grew much stronger and he wasn't alone anymore. The air around him was filled with the flutter of tiny frozen wings. <gasps> Ooh, what's that? A whole lot of little butterflies. Or moths, maybe? Let's find out. Millions of butterflies were caught in a freezing windstorm. They had been on their way to the winter, their winter home when the storm took them by surprise. Poor butterflies, said Walter to himself. The wind was driving them down toward the frozen lake below. I've got to help them, thought Walter. He knew he had it in him, if he could just get it out. He grunted, he groaned, he pressed. He looked into their tiny insect faces. It was now or never. Look at them floating down to the frozen lake. And Walter's getting ready to help them out. He let rip. A blast of warm gas lifted the butterflies out of their dive. It melted the ice on their wings. It carried them to the far side of the mountain where the sun was shining. They touched down in a field of wildflowers. A forest ranger in his tower grabbed his two-way radio. I think those butterflies are going to be okay. <gasps> Look, there they are. There's Walter's big fart farting out, melting them all, and off they went into this beautiful sunny park. Good old Walter. Out of gas, Walter went down like a rocket. He splashed into a pond and doggy paddled to the shore. He shook himself dry. Then he sniffed the air, turned around and started the long walk home. He'd only gone a little way when the ranger pulled up in his jeep. Can I give you a lift, Wonder Dog? Mm, now he's Wonder Dog. There he is, the ranger in his little orange jeep. Somebody sent us a big package, said Mother, looking out the window. It's not a package, cried Billy, it's Walter. See, said Father, I told you he'd find his way home. Oh, Walter, said Betty, we're so glad you're back. Not as half as glad as we are. Not half as glad as we are, said the delivery men. <laughs> we know why. Yeah, they made him a special little basket. He's home. And look, they had a wee party about him saving the butterflies. It's good, isn't it? So even though he did smelly farts, he's still... Helped save some butterflies. <laughs> and now I'm going to sing you my Magic and Me song. So if you're not snuggled down, get snuggled down and I will sing you a song with my guitar. The Magic and Me song. Now, if you haven't already heard this song, you could play it tomorrow. There's an awesome video on YouTube uh, that you can watch. It's very cool. Um, but it's very fast. It's dancey. So you don't want to do it tonight. So I'm going to sing it sort of in a lullaby fashion. It goes like this. I can sail the ocean wide Ride the waves of the ever-changing tide Everything I need comes from deep inside I've got the magic in me, me, me I can cross over desert sand Leap out trusted where I land If I need help then I'll take your hand I've got the magic in me, me, me I've got the magic in me, me, me I've got the magic in me, me, me to be. 
mystery Make new discoveries Because this life's a mystery Uh-huh I've got pride and passion And I've got big dreams I've got determination Nobody can stop me So take your sparkle Take your shine And hold it in the air Now spin around and let it go That's magic everywhere It's magic everywhere And it starts right here I've got the magic in me And I hope you have a really lovely sleep. I've had a funny, funny story for myself today. Oh my goodness, I don't even know what I'm saying. It's kind of like a bloopers reel. Anyway, I'm going to blow you a kiss. And you're going to have an awesome sleep. Mwah. Don't forget to blow me one back. And I'll catch it. Go. Got it. And I'll see you tomorrow night. Same place, same time. Bye.